Hi everyone, my name is Chrissy and I'm a life skills and deployment educator at Fleeton Family Support Center in San Diego. I'm here today to offer a condensed video recorded um, portion of one of our return and reunion courses and this one is on return to intimacy. And we're talking about return to intimacy, not just physical intimacy, but also emotional intimacy. This would be a course that you might offer for anyone that's in a relationship, um, an intimate partner relationship, significant other relationship, married or just dating. This would be a good course to offer to those sailors. Now I'd like to actually also mention that I want you to look at this course through three different lenses. First would be your first time sailors. Um, these are the people that are new to deployment. I haven't experienced it before. I don't know what's going to be coming forward for me going ahead and I'm here to learn. The second could be I've been on a deployment before. My spouse and I have been through a deployment, but our life situation has changed. We've either had a death in the family. Um, we have new children. Um, we were just dating before and now we're married or maybe I was previously married and now I'm in a new relationship. So this one is for those where deployment has changed. And by the way, most deployments are different. No two are exactly the like. And then the third one could be for our veteran deployers. These are the people who have been through deployment several times. They know backwards and forwards, um, the ins and outs. They could teach this course better than I could. And for those people, I say, Come to this course, take a time to just decompress for yourself, and then take a look around at the other sailors you know of. Who's looking to you as a mentor? Who might be um, coming to you with additional questions? And this is just to refresh your mind so that when they come to you with those issues, you're prepared. And then know that you can also reach out to us at Fleet and Family for any additional uh, concerns or considerations that you might have. All right, so let's get going. Um, again, this is for Return and Reunion Curriculum. I actually have provided here just a few pictures of me on return and reunions. These are from the Lincoln and this one is from the Essex. And these are some, uh, I would just say that being able to train underway is one of the best experiences I've had at Fleet and Family. I really like teaching these courses and I really like being able to interact with service members. So if you wanna reach out to me directly, this email address is good, christina.d.hughes ctr at navy.mil. This phone number, I'm not there at the moment, so uh, email is best right now. All right, so return to intimacy. Again, we're going to be covering a little bit of the physical aspects of intimacy, but mostly the emotional and the connection pieces that make physical intimacy a little bit better. Um, so this is the general flow of where we're gonna go. We're gonna start with some communication techniques, um, some ce celebrating and understanding changes that happen, and then managing your expectations. Now again, these pre-recorded classes are to deal with the current global pandemic and COVID-19 situation. So I'm gonna be interweaving some of the additional considerations we might have going forward. And probably the best way that I can mention, um, that I can implement that is talking first about how you plan to celebrate homecoming. So I like to use this three questions activity, kind of saying, what was the most difficult part of deployment? So some people will say it was very difficult for me to not be able to see my family for an exterior period of time, not have a day off in such a long stretch, or maybe I missed out on some important events in my life. That was really difficult. I really wanted to be there um, when my mother-in-law was sick it was difficult for me not to be supportive of my spouse, so that was a hard part. So talk amongst yourselves if you're in a group setting or just have a moment to yourself to think, what was the most difficult part of this deployment for me? What did you miss most about home? That could be, I miss going to my favorite restaurants. I miss doing the activities I like. I miss being able to be barefoot when I take a shower. Things like this, talk amongst yourselves. And I like to have this in a group setting because it um, kind of elicits some additional things that people will say, oh yeah, I missed that too. I forgot, I forgot how much I missed that. Um, additionally, you might not actually be able when you get home to do some of the activities that you wanted to. Um, consider that you might be confined to your home during the leave period or uh, palm period that you experience after a deployment, which is very different. Most people 
um, will plan a trip. They will want to spend time with their significant other. They'll want to go visit family. And that might not be an option for you right now. So instead of being really upset about um, what you cannot do, focus on some of the things and the ways that you can use time that you might be confined to your home or to your workplace. So the last question that I like to ask amongst sailors is, how do you want to celebrate homecoming? Now, this is a time during normal uh, situations where we say, hey, you might not want to have a big homecoming with your in-laws and your parents and your grandparents and your significant other. You might actually just want to be you and your significant other for a period of time. Anyone's decision is always um, what's right for them. Um, but this is a good time to communicate those expectations. However, you might not be able to be with the people that you want to be during a homecoming. And that's a very disappointing part of homecoming. And we are all upset about some of the changes that have had to happen. But I feel particularly um, empathetic towards service members who aren't getting the full experience that they want and for the spouses back at home who have not been able to lean on some of the support structures that they have back, um, that they should have. So consider that as well, that things might have been doubly difficult for spouses and for um, significant others back at home. They might not be able to reach out to their family. They might have had a loss of employment. They might not be um, financially as stable as they used to and realize that you can reach out to us for additional resources with that. But start eliciting the flow of conversation with questions like this, which brings us to our next point. Some service members, and I won't fault you because you're not gonna be the only one, sort of put their family and their significant others in a little plastic bag in their head and they put them in the freezer and then when they go on deployment, they're thinking mostly about work. They will compartmentalize um, for their own mental health. However, you can't just come home and take that spouse or significant other and let them thaw out and everything just goes back to the way it was before deployment. People will have changed, they will have evolved, um, there will be things that have happened and we want to make sure that we give time to start eliciting that flow of conversation so that we can begin to bond and begin to feel more connected with that person. Now, if you've been having regular conversations, if you have a great system that works for long distance um, communication, pat yourself on the back. Good job, that's fantastic. If you have something that works for you and you're talking to someone who's having a more difficult time, this is an opportunity that you can impart that wisdom. But asking open-ended um, questions can be really useful because it will elicit more flow of conversation. Instead of saying like, did you have a good day today? Yes or no? Um, we wanna say more, um, more open-ended questions that deal with the deployment, with the homecoming ahead, and with the reintegration process. So these are some examples of open-ended questions, and I would actually encourage you to reach out to us because we have 20 of these open-ended questions that you could send to your significant other to start understanding what has happened and what things have been like for them on the other side. And likewise, for you to, for them to understand what it's been like for you to be underway and separated from everyone. Because as, again, I'm a spouse, I'm married to an active duty service member. I had an idea of what it was like being underway and it wasn't until I had the experience of going underway and teaching that I learned a lot more and understood a lot more. So these are some great questions that you can ask what was, the most, what was the most difficult or the best part of deployment? Um, what would you like to, um, can't read backwards very well. <laughs> what would you like to spend more or less time doing right now? Like, have you been cleaning way too much? Do you not like taking out the uh, trash? Do, are you exhausted of washing cars? Maybe this is an opportunity to kind of share some responsibilities. I think that this is, what surprised you the most about homecoming? That would be a question for later. Um, and then I like this one the best. What do you need most from me right now? That's a very vulnerable question, but can bring a lot of good conversation later. What do you need most from me when, when I get back? Um, how are, what are some ways that I can help out? Um, have you been lonely? And again, realize that a lot 
has changed back at home. I might not be going to the same job. I might have lost opportunities. I might have gained some other opportunities. Um, the workspace that we once used as a gym is now my home office and I have to work from there from this hour to this hour every day. Things have changed. But the best way to approach that is by generating a flow of conversation. All right, I'll see you in part two.